Well, meanwhile, let's talk about Ukraine, because more American weapons are on their way to the front line there. And for that country's troops, really, those supplies can't come quickly enough. Russian forces, we know, are making advances in the area around the city of Kharkiv. They've seized a string of villages and they forced thousands of Ukrainian civilians to flee from those areas. And the message that more U.S. weapons are coming was delivered uh, in person by the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken. He's arrived in Kyiv. He came by a sleeper train for a surprise, unannounced visit for talks with President Volodymyr Zelensky. It's the first visit to Ukraine by a senior U.S. official since Congress finally passed that long-delayed $61 billion military aid package for Ukraine last month. Well, our Ukraine correspondent James Waterhouse has been following Antony Blinken's visit for us. A nine-hour sleeper train is still the best way to Kyiv, even if you're America's top <laughs> diplomat. A quick switch to a more familiar motorcade before a long day of meetings. First up for Antony Blinken, President Zelensky. Not simple period for Ukraine and a tough period for, for the east of our country, for our warriors. Thank you that uh, you came, especially these days, to support Ukraine. This is the first high-level U.S. visit since the unblocking of a $61 billion military package for Kyiv. Welcomed, yes, but delayed by political disagreements and now slow deliveries. We know this is a challenging time, but we also know that um, in the near term, the assistance is now on the way. Uh, some of it's already arrived, more of it will be arriving, and that's going to make a real difference against the ongoing Russian aggression uh, on the battlefield. And this is what it looks like now. A year and a half of stalemate has suddenly turned into a significant Russian offensive in a week. Thousands are fleeing their homes in the northeastern Kharkiv region. Russian bombs have rained down for five days and invading troops are getting closer. Keep talking to us, says this police officer to 71-year-old Olga. She was injured in an explosion and their car is now an ambulance. They meet paramedics. We're told she's in a serious condition. The newly homeless end up here in Ukraine's second city, Kharkiv. People are terrified, they are stressed, they take, uh, they keep their uh, animals with them. Uh, so everyone is in a huge stress because of the constant shelling and of the shock of the Russian offensive. For now, Kharkiv city is a place of relative safety. But for how long? While few think the Russians are capable of taking it, they could soon be in artillery range. Missiles routinely hit Kharkiv. If this offensive isn't contained, the destruction will be even greater. Ukraine is struggling to hold what is a new front line. Uh, well, we can go straight to James now. James Waterhouse, our Ukraine correspondent, who's live for us in Kyiv. And I suppose, as I mentioned at the beginning, these weapons that uh, Antony Blinken says are coming, these new weapons supplies, they can't come quickly enough, really, for Ukraine and for those frontline forces who are dealing with this kind of surprise offensive which has been launched near Kharkiv. Absolutely. I mean, Ukraine, Ben, is adamant that this wasn't a surprise, that it was merely sudden, but the inescapable reality is that its troops are struggling to contain this joint incursion. Uh, and it's not just in the Kharkiv region. There are more than 100 evacuations planned uh, in settlements in the Sumy region further north, where there is constant shelling in another part of Ukraine, which borders Russia. And it's there that an attack is anticipated too. You know, the dimensions of this invasion are changing dramatically in Russia's favour. Now, of course, whenever you have the military activity, you have the politics behind it. And Antony Blinken, the US Secretary of State, has just gone for a working lunch close to where I am in a pizzeria with his Ukrainian counterpart, Dimitro Kuliba. Not a bad place to take an American visitor. And as you say, the tone 
is very much of reassurance. But the problem for Ukraine doesn't just rest with delayed American weaponry. The, the country admits that it's already dragging what few reserve forces it has to the Kharkiv region, uh, where it is all, where they are still struggling. So things are looking really difficult for Ukraine in this uh, perilous period. And is, is there a sense, really, that Russia has been taking advantage of the, the sort of delay in getting these extra US weapons into Ukraine and using that time to mount these new attacks? Absolutely. I think, I think we've seen a gradual taper since last October, which is actually when the political disagreements really started to affect the freeing up of this American aid. You had uh, more and more Ukrainian units having to ration ammunition, whereas you had Russia remaining on a war footing, mobilising more men, which Ukraine, incidentally, has struggled with uh, as, as by way of a, of, of, a, of a domestic challenge. And so what Russia has done, notably in the east, was uh, take uh, more and more Ukrainian territory, square kilometre by square kilometre. It had a trophy in the form of the town of Avdivka. They haven't stopped there. Their tactics are costly, um, but uh, it's now changing to a new dimension. James, very good to see you. Thank you very much for that. James Waterhouse there, our Ukraine correspondent. So let's talk a bit more about what are the uh, arms and weapons that the United States is supplying to Ukraine and how they could make a difference on the front line. Well, the aid package agreed by Congress is, as we mentioned, worth more than $60 billion. It includes air defence interceptors, surface-to-air missiles designed to combat enemy bombers and reconnaissance planes, uh, there's also more artillery, which has been in short supply as Ukrainian troops try to fight off those advances James was just telling us about. And finally, the US has sent ATACMS. Now, these are long-ranged, precision-guided missiles. They can strike Russian targets at a range of up to 300 kilometres. Uh, separately, the European Union has agreed another 50 billion euros worth of aid after Hungary stopped blocking that deal, and the UK is sending another £500 million on top of the £2.5 billion in military aid it has already pledged to give Ukraine this year. So let's talk then to Elena Tregub, who's Executive Director for Ukraine's Independent Defence Anti-Corruption Committee. And from Ukraine's point of view, um, these weapons are coming from all these different countries I've just run through, but it's still not enough. Absolutely, it's not enough. Uh, the six months delay of assistance package from the US uh, Congress caused uh, not only um, Ukraine losing territories on the Eastern Front, but also uh, significant damage to Ukrainian uh, civilian infrastructure, Ukrainian energy infrastructure. There was a recent uh, analysis published just yesterday that uh, Russia doubled its effort uh, in bombarding Ukraine with missiles and with drones in those six months that we were experiencing the assistance delay. And Ukrainian interception rate of missile, Russian missiles fell from 70% to 46%. And therefore, a lot of, uh, nuclear, a lot of uh, energy infrastructure objects were destroyed. And uh, basically, uh, this is emergency. We need to receive a much uh, a more assistance when it comes to air defense. And this recent package does include uh, uh, missiles for Patriots, for NASAMs. Um, however, it's maybe around only 10% what is urgently needed to protect Ukrainian uh, uh, territory from the air attack that Russia is uh, now indeed intensified. So when you say it's not enough, is the Ukrainian position really look, we're grateful for what you're doing to us, giving to us from the West. We're grateful for all the money, the billions that you've spent on these weapons supplies. But at the same time, we're frustrated because there has been this delay, in particular with the American weapons, and frustrated we're not getting exactly what we need to stop all these bombardments. Uh, exactly. Ukraine uh, now relies very much on um, our international partners. Without international support, we will not be able to uh, sustain our defense. It's absolutely clear. However, um, the lack of um, missiles, for example, last month, caused their um, damage to our 
Trepilska uh, power plant, which is the largest uh, thermal uh, power generating facility near Kiev for millions and millions of uh, um, uh, dollars for 100 millions. And uh, this damage will be very hard to repair. And the money needed to repair this damage in order for Ukrainians not to freeze in winter is already some tremendous amounts. And therefore, we explain that because we delaying this assistance, the consequences may be irreversible and the, the need to support Ukraine will become even greater because we'll be dealing with essentially the threat of humanitarian uh, disaster in Ukraine this winter. Very good to talk to you, Elena Tregov, who's Executive Director for Ukraine's Independent Defence Anti-Corruption Committee. Thank you for your time. Thank you for inviting me.